Welcome to Exploratory Data Analysis and Data Visualization. So before we get into the actual subject matter of the course, some preliminaries. First, I thought it's useful for me to uh, talk to you about what I think learning is and how learning works based on research findings in the field of education. Uh, that's because we're going to be spending a lot of time together, two consecutive courses back to back, and I thought it'll be a good idea to uh, have a common understanding, a shared understanding of what learning is. The traditional view of learning is that you've got this instructor who's a fountainhead of knowledge and the instructor transfers knowledge to the student. Okay, that's the traditional idea of where you've got this person with extreme wisdom and just communicating information to the student. The reality of learning, however, people accept now is pretty different. So first of all, you've got the instructional, instructional inputs that the instructor provides, not just the inputs, but the environment that the instructor creates for learning. But then there are lots of other factors. So for example, learning is not affected only by what the instructor is giving the student, but it's affected by the student's prior experiences, prior knowledge, and also the student's attitudes towards learning. How do they see what learning is? What is their understanding about how learning works? And so many other factors, right? Because learning is something that is happening inside the student's head. And there's only so much control that somebody external can uh, place on the process. So what we see is that learning is actually all of these factors, many factors, combined together to produce learning. Right? So I'm sort of visualizing it as everything going into a drum and the drum is rotating and out comes knowledge. Out in the sense of the knowledge gets created in the mind of the student. So the whole idea is that knowledge is actually constructed by the student and it's not something that is received. So the traditional understanding about knowledge being transferred from the brain of the teacher to the brain of the student is seriously flawed. What is happening is the, the instructor is creating an environment, providing inputs to the student and that input combined with a lot of other things is what causes the student to construct knowledge for themselves. Okay, so this is a key point that knowledge is something that the learner constructs. So that's very important and therefore it's only you who can teach yourself. Nobody else can teach you anything. They can give all kinds of inputs but ultimately you are going to teach yourself by how you assimilate that knowledge and therefore it takes a lot of effort on the part of the student to be able to learn something. So the traditional idea of this expert teacher coming and giving this great lecture and everybody has learned something beautiful so easily because the professor was so good, that's a myth. It doesn't happen like that. Okay, That's because learning involves fundamentally rewiring of the brain because you didn't know something and now as a result of all the inputs you've got and as a result of your assimilating that, you have changed your organization of your brain itself and obviously that cannot happen without to, without a lot of strain and effort. Okay, That is because the brain is actually involved in trying to protect you from uncertainties and the brain actually interferes with your process of learning. The brain itself is a great barrier towards your learning because it's trying to shield you from uncertainty and when you're trying to learn something new, the tension creates uncertainty. Right? So you're literally having to struggle against your own brain in order to learn. And obviously the process is full of strain and effort and nothing can be done about it. Okay. So in fact, I always like to say, if you're doing a course with me and your brain is not hurting, then I'm doing something wrong. Okay, I'm not doing something right because I'm not challenging you enough and therefore I'm not giving you knowledge that is genuinely of use to you. So many times I like to make this analogy about learning. Right? Think of it as the process of climbing a mountain. The process is certainly very, very hard. The climb to the top is hard, but we hope that the view from the top is worth the effort. Right? In other words, of course, that you struggled a lot to learn something, but we hope that what you've learned is worth it, that it's useful for you. So what I request of you is that 
I cannot really transfer knowledge to you. You're going to construct it for yourself. And so the primary thing is that you have to take charge of learning and you have to actively engage with the subject matter. And it's going to take time. Every week, there's really no way out. You have to devote something like 8 to 10 hours of work a week to assimilate the subject matter. There's no getting around this. So that's very important. You have to actively engage with the subject matter. All I can do is create the environment for you. Second very important thing is you have to be critically aware of what you know and what you don't know. This is called metacognition, right? When I don't know something, it's important for me to understand that I don't know it so that I can put in the additional effort and try to learn it, right? If I just fool myself thinking, oh, I already understand this, then it's a problem. So that is why uh, when you're listening to the lectures, you're going to obviously have these check questions and review questions. Make sure that you're able to answer those review questions with ease. You have to reach that level of knowledge. Only then you can know that you have engaged with the subject matter. Okay, so uh, you will be facing a lot of review questions. Some of them will be pretty difficult and almost all the time the review questions will go to very important aspects of what you saw in the video. And if you're not completely 100% comfortable with what the review question is asking you, then that is a signal to you that you don't really understand some of the material you should then take the responsibility to go back and make sure you understand it. That's absolutely critical. Another very important thing, of course, is that assignments are not chores to be completed to satisfy the instructor. Okay, I don't really have to tell uh, you people this. You know, you, you, you are uh, adults, you understand this. But many times with our undergraduate students, that, that kind of an attitude develops. That it's as if the instructor is making them do something. That's not it. Assignments are crucial to learning. That is when you have the opportunity to really test out whether you understand the concepts that were taught or not. And assignments, therefore, have to be challenging. If you're having some difficulty doing the assignments, I'm doing something right. If the assignments are very easy and you're just able to breeze through them, they're a waste. Okay? So please pay a lot of attention to assignments because they're a crucial part of learning. And another very important and useful thing is to discuss actively with your learning community. Right? So uh, we have teams uh, in which we'll be using uh, which we'll be using for discussion. Please participate actively in teams. When you have a question, post it. When somebody posts a question and you think you know the answer, provide the answer. Your answer could very well be wrong. It doesn't matter. Right? What is important is engaging with the subject matter. Okay, so that's very important. Ask questions, answer questions, and of course, actively reach out to the instructor. Okay, so another very important thing I'd like to uh, stress at this point is that it's very easy to put off work until the last moment, but I think you will get the maximum benefit from the course if you do a little bit of work every day rather than just sitting down and doing all the work in bulk. Okay, that is because many concepts take a little time to sink in. Right, so I post the material on Monday. So maybe you get some of the work done on Monday itself. You know, take a look at some of the videos. Maybe spend 15 minutes looking at the videos on Monday, trying to answer some questions, right? And then go back on Tuesday, do a little more work and so on. That way, you'll have a greater chance of absorbing all the material rather than if you sit down and do a marathon effort on Thursday morning uh, in, to, be, to get ready for the Thursday evening recitation. That will really not help you very much. So the role of the teacher has evolved from the initial assumption of the teacher is the sage on the stage dishing out pearls of wisdom. Things have moved on now and now people understand that the teacher is really the guide on the side. Okay, Almost one among equals. Not quite because the teacher has certain prerogatives. The teacher sets the subject matter of the course. The teacher, of course, has the responsibility of evaluating students and so on. But the teacher is pretty much a guide, okay, and not the sage who's communicating wisdom, okay. So that's our understanding of uh, how teaching is and how learning works. So I hope that you got something from this, and I hope that this sets us off on the right foot with respect to the course.